don't have a formal presentation. I would prefer to speak to you uh, at Tempo, and I would want to share the experience which I have had uh, in this industry. Um, continued with what uh, Arun mentioned uh, with, in regards to how education has evolved in recent times. I can tell you one thing for a fact, uh, even before I start talking about careers, is that this is an era of multidisciplinary learning. You know, uh, at the age of 44, uh, many years back, we would specialize in finance, we would specialize in economics, uh, we would specialize in science and commerce, arts, etc. But today we live in an era where, uh, in industry where I work, if there are 10 students, I can tell you out of 10, four would be engineers, three would be uh, BSc, two would be arts, one would be commerce. In the arts, one would be sociology, one would be psychology. And all of these guys want to make a career in financial markets. So which means this industry or rather the way education has evolved and the way professional environment is developing, uh, we don't really have specialization anymore. We are essentially living in an era of multidisciplinary understanding of subjects. Now, um, the idea of this session, which I'm doing for you is to tell you about how financial markets uh, could be considered as a career option. But before I do that, I want to tell you about how this industry has evolved over the last uh, 30 years. I am aged 44. And I'll tell you about my own experiences as a school going kid growing up in 1980s and 1990s and how the industry has changed in recent times. I believe that this is one industry that is going through a massive automation process in the sense that this industry is disrupting the way transaction used to happen back then and how it happens at this point in time. In other words, I believe this industry has evolved in the sense that it is heavily automated. We have got machines that execute orders to buy and sell. And we are talking about a system which going forwards in next, in next one decade, possibly could be advising you on how you can plan your financial retirement or how you can save money for your child's education 20, 30 years down the line. Now talking about myself, the reason I said 80s, 90s is because way back in the 80s, what used to happen is I would accompany my father and he would take me to banks uh, in those days to deposit and withdraw money. Now in 1980s, obviously we did not have banks that we see today. You know, We did not have ICICI Bank, HDFC Bank, Axis Bank. We would have what we commonly refer to as PSU banks, public sector undertaking banks, which uh, I, can, I can name some, some of them. I can name a few examples, uh, like for example, State Bank of India, Andhra Bank, Indian Overseas Bank, Indian Bank, Karnataka Bank, so on and so forth. So in those days, I would, visit, I would go to a bank with my father and my father would deposit and withdraw money. He would carry a passbook and there would be a clerk in those days who would manually check the entries in the passbook. And he will do that by cross-checking the information that they have in the ledger book that they will keep with themselves. So every time my father would deposit money, he would manually enter the amount in the passbook and he will do the same. He will manually enter that data in the ledger book. The clerk would do it. And same thing would happen when my father would want to withdraw money. He would uh, write a check and the clerk would manually enter the withdrawal amount in my father's passbook. And he would do the same thing in his ledger book. So the entire process of depositing and withdraw money would take, would take as much as 10 to 15 minutes. It would take quite some time. But today in 2022, we do not have passbooks anymore. Now, what happens is now at the end of every month, you are sent a digital statement in your email ID in which you can see the transactions that you have done in your bank account. There's no need to visit the bank anymore. If I have to send money to somebody, I can send money using UPI apps. I can send money using the Beam applications. 
I can send money using Google Pay, Mobi Twitter. There's so many platforms that can be used today to send and withdraw money. I get my salary in my account digitally, but I remember my father back in those days would get his salary in pure cash. And my father will come home with cash in his hand. He would give some money to my mother and some money would be deposited in the bank account using that old system of filling up a deposit slip, going to the bank, entering those data in the passbook, in the ledger book. So it would take 20, 30 odd minutes. But today that bank is a total digital system. In fact, it is, it is widely believed that 10 years down the line, when you, I would assume that some of you are in ninth standard, so uh, 14 years of age, when you become 24 years of age, a decade from now, it is highly likely that you will not even be carrying an ATM card in your wallet. Because ATM card, <coughs> ATM card would become redundant, <laughs> would become redundant because uh, the Google Pays and the UPI apps, the Beam apps will effectively replace how you send and receive money. So much so that now we can send and receive money using WhatsApp. Who would have thought five years back that sending and receiving money using WhatsApp is possible? Which means this industry, the industry we commonly refer to as banking and financial services is heavily being digitalized in the sense that this is the industry next in line in the process of automation. We have already seen the automobile industry being automated. Now machines uh, manufacture your cars. We have seen medical science uh, and uh, uh, seen an element of automation where somebody can do surgery sitting in some remote corner of the world using robots to do eye surgery. So this industry that I represent now is next in the line of automation. So the BFSI space, in fact, stock markets effectively have become today an automated industry in the sense that this is technically a pseudo IT industry sector. Even though we do not officially call ourselves, ourselves an IT industry, but if you see many of the activities that we do, the way you buy and sell shares, the way settlement is done in today's capital markets, the entire thing is done on a digital platform. So which means we are today and effectively an automated sector, which means we are a pseudo IT industry as I speak to you. There used to be a time many years back when if you would want to buy and sell shares, it would take as much as 30 days to actually have the shares in your name. And today, as I speak to you, the shares can be transferred from the seller's DMAT account to a buyer's DMAT account in T plus two days time. We're talking about an era where cryptocurrencies are being traded, bitcoins are being traded, blockchains are being used to report transaction, confirm transaction. So imagine a time when blockchain enters stock markets, blockchains enters stock markets. Do we really need T plus two settlement system? We're talking about an era where possibly it is very much likely that if you confirm at the time of placing the order, when you place an order to buy and sell, if you can confirm that it is with the intention of genuinely buying something or selling something, we do not require T plus two settlement. We can possibly settle on the very same day itself. Would that mean that going forwards, a time will come, would you require a stock broker to be acting as an intermediary between the buyer and the seller? Would you require a depository bank where we maintain uh, the digital records of everything that you buy and sell? Do you require a depository bank? Do you require a commercial bank to settle the monetary transaction? Do you require a clearing corporation that settles transactions, that settles buying and selling in the capital markets? Do you need them going forwards? There's always an argument that says that as technology comes, people will lose jobs. But the fact is we also have to understand that as technology comes, it opens up a new set of career profile, career opportunities. So when, when tractors were introduced in the, in the farming sector, there was always this fear that those, bullet, those bulls will have no use going forwards. The labor that is used to, far, to do farming activity behind the bull 
will not will lose their job how will they survive but the point is when tractors replaced bullet carts tractors opened up new opportunity new career profiles in the markets so in that context one of the biggest challenges that you face going forwards in this industry is how much automation do you know in your classroom learning in fact there used to be a time when i started my career that i would do a finance economics degree and i'll do a short term diploma in with it sector in it languages in those days i used to learn something called fox pro which obviously don't exist now today this is era of python and r softwares but today you see that more and more people in the finance industry are doing it major it degrees and they're doing finance diploma eras have changed times have changed so this industry one of the first thing that we need to understand whether you want to work or make a career in capital markets is to understand that this is a multidisciplinary sector now in the sense that finance is not the only thing that you need to know you become more competitive professionally if you are able to complement your understanding of finance with any technical language or any technical skill set that you will have programming as an instance see in fact whenever i do a session of introducing stock markets to people 10 years back i would say this 10 year 10 years back i would say two points one that it is the oldest stock exchange in the world we developed in about 150 years back we have been in existence for more than 150 close to about 150 odd years i will say two points one that we are the oldest stock exchange in the world and the second point that i would say is we are the world's largest stock exchange so these two points would obviously be the usp and one of the uh, uh, highlights that i would say in a in a speech like this but today after 10 years i realize that there is the third point which i say which i would never say one decade back i would say now the third point is we are the world's one of the world's fastest stock exchange so we are the not just the oldest one not just the largest one but we are also one of the world's fastest stock exchange now you will see on my screen on the left hand side you will see it says co location network latency it also says median response time now what is median response time now it says equity 2 derivatives 2 currency 4 commodities 3 what does it effectively what it effectively means is when somebody places an order to buy and sell on the bse trading systems when you punch order on your trading system to buy and sell the order is routed from your trading system through your broker's it network to the stock exchange and we respond back to your message confirming the fact that yes we have received your order so that confirmation time that we provide is 2 microseconds which effectively means that every second that i speak to you we receive somewhere close to 30 to 40000 offers to buy and sell 40000 offers come every second so you can imagine how fast the trading systems are we receive on a good day when the markets open we receive on a good day somewhere between 2.5 lakh to 2.7 lakh orders per second now why is this significant this is significant because this microsecond which i am talking about a decade from now when you become 24 years of age that microseconds will turn nanoseconds which means going forwards a time will come where it would be practically impossible for anybody in the human capacity punching orders to buy and sell physically that would be impossible which means in a decade from now you will see that about 90 95% of trading that happens in indian capital markets would be done by machines and those traders would be called as high frequency traders they would be called as algorithm traders that means machine effectively will replace how buying and selling happens in the markets today do you know in the us it is 
already 90% of all trading activity that happens on the us markets is already machines in india as i speak to you about 60% of all the orders that come in the system is driven by machines that means 90% is just 30% more and i truly believe that even though i am saying one decade i doubt it will happen in a decade time i doubt i i believe rather that this will happen much ahead of time it might possibly happen in the next 5 years possibly by the end of this decade itself maybe by 2026 27 midway through this decade you will see that about 3/4 of all trading activities that we see on the bombay stock exchange will be done by machines so which means the greatest career career opportunity that you can have going forwards is in is including technology in finance in fact i always tell my students who are doing their ug at this point in time people who are doing their under graduation at this point in time i always tell them that if they plan to upgrade their understanding if they want to upskill themselves with an mba they should not do an mba finance what they should do is they should do an mba in fintech because that will complement what they learn in finance with what they will what they will use effectively using technology so fintech this this industry is no longer banking and financial services this industry can broadly be classified as fintech where it is quite possible that one day even your financial planning even your retirement would be suggested not by a human a financial planner in physical form it would be done by machines i hope i i hope you are able to understand the context of what i am trying to say okay uh, am i audible because i i don't uh, i don't see here i don't see any response coming through so am i audible yes okay uh, any questions at this point students okay so uh, so i for the ninth standard people i hope uh, so for the younger kids from school uh, i'm sure you must have studied about stock markets about business so see the stock markets that we talk even though uh, even though we call ourselves the bombay stock exchange the national stock exchange the london stock exchange but actually speaking factually speaking this is no longer a stock markets you know this is a market where you can effectively buy and sell all varieties all kinds of financial instruments that means we do not just trade in shares we do not just provide a market where people buy and sell shares we do not just provide a market where only companies list their shares today as i speak to you in 2022 it is a market where companies not just do not just invest or list their shares they also list their debt instruments now if you look at my screen at this point you'll observe that the bsc has about 5200 companies listed 5200 companies have listed their financial instruments in which you and i can invest but you'll also observe in that same list that in this 5200 companies about 480 companies 483 to be more precise about 483 companies have only listed their debt instruments which means this is a, so there is a general misconception that people have that to list you list only shares but the table that you see now will tell you that if there is a choice companies can list their debt instruments as well and only their debt instruments so do we just buy and sell debt and equity no besides debt and equity we also are a market where you can participate in what is effectively called a derivative markets now if you're wondering what derivatives are derivatives are basically financial securities or other a financial contract that allows you to buy and sell something in the future you can buy and sell any asset you can buy and sell anything in which valuations are likely to change you can buy and sell any asset classes where the prices will change in the future where prices will rise or fall in the future that asset can be 
bought and sold using a derivative contract you must you must have some of you who are in the 12th standard possibly must have heard about forward futures and options these are basically financial contract to buy and sell shares currencies government debt instruments commodities in the future because we believe that these asset classes will see its value rise or fall in the future and the change in value of these products will have consequence on us not just as an investor but also as a producer and a consumer so why i wouldn't call this a stock exchange even though we call ourselves a stock exchange today stock exchange is a market where you can buy and sell shares you can buy and sell derivative instruments and this derivative can be used to buy and sell currency commodity equity government debt but what you will also observe that in last 5 years in this market we also included commodities now in bombay stock exchange you can buy and sell commodities in nasdaq stock exchange we can buy and sell commodities but commodities about 5 years back used to be a separate market where you we would have a separate set of exchanges multi commodities exchange national commodity derivative exchange etc etc but today commodities is also one of our asset profiles in which you can participate in the markets so given the diverse asset classes in which we trade are we really a typical stock exchange so which means our definition of a financial institution have evolved it has diversified to include many other asset classes which traditionally is not related to equity as a asset profile so today as i speak to you we are one of the world's biggest stock exchange having more than 5000 plus listed companies we are one of the world's uh, largest stock exchange one of the world's fastest stock exchange and going forwards you will see that you will have even insurance that will be available to be invested in through the same stock market system that we provide to you as an investor so that's the stock markets all about stock markets are effectively a capital markets as i speak to you okay so how can you make a career in this industry see there are many people in the markets who do not have an understanding on how to multiply or create their wealth again i, I can use my own example if you see my parent my father had absolutely no clue how stock markets function in fact in those days there was a general fear about stock market as as a market where people buy and sell securities in the most unethical manner some of you must have heard about the famous scams of harshad mehta and ketan parekh that was an unfortunate incident but today as i speak to you we have got very powerful regulators in the form of sebi securities and exchange board of india which ensures that the markets function in the most transparent and ethical manner where they regulate each and every participant including buyer seller companies who are listed companies who are who are looking to list themselves on the exchange the, the brokers themselves they regulate everybody in the markets which means in today's world though i may not be able to say scams cannot happen but it is lot more difficult to do a scam in today's time because regulations have really strengthened over a period of time so my father would invest in fixed deposits my father would invest in real estate my father would invest in in uh, gold but stock markets mutual funds was not something that they understood in that era but today as i speak to you the level of understanding have opened up so much in the markets with classroom with training programs like the one that i'm doing for you the many other institutions all over india where they teach you about finance and financial management that the understanding have widened so much as i mentioned this is a multidisciplinary sector where an engineer can also advise people on how to maximize their wealth because it is not the era where in the past where engineers would do engineering job and doctors would do doctors job 
Now, doctors also would want to learn finance because tomorrow they would want to start their own dispensary. They would want to start their own hospitals. And obviously, they would want to know how to manage these institutions financially. <clears throat> I hope you, you're, you're, you're getting the point. So this industry has many such career profiles. You can become a equity advisor. You can advise people on how to invest in a company by understanding their balance sheets by quantifying their profit and loss statements. You can become a mutual fund analyst where you can advise people uh, on identifying a good mutual fund in which they would be able to invest their money. You can become a derivative analyst where you can advise importers and exporters of crude oil, where you can advise people who provide IT related service to their customers in other countries. The reason I'm using crude oil and IT traders is because these people are exposed to currency depreciation and appreciation. So if these people understand derivative markets very well in currency, they would be able to advise these people on how to reduce their exposure or reduce their risk that comes from the currency markets. If you're a trader of commodities, if you're a genuine trader, a genuine produce, producer of an agricultural commodity, Imagine if you know how derivative markets work in commodities, you would be able to minimize the risk that comes to commodities in the future in terms of price fluctuations. So you can become an analyst, you can become a commodity analyst, you can become a currency derivative analyst, you can become an equity derivative analyst, you can become a fund manager who can advise customers on how to create their own portfolio of investment. You can become a risk analyst where you can advise people on how to mitigate, how to diversify their risk. You can become a risk analyst for a corporate institution where you can, uh, you can mitigate their risk that comes from the point of view of corporate risk management. You can become a private equity analyst. You can become a, uh, uh, a underwriter. Now, if you're wondering who an underwriter is, underwriters are those people who assist companies who would want to list on the stock exchange. So how to list on the stock exchange? You can become a, uh, an expert in securities law. Securities law because when a company lists on the stock exchange, there are many legal things that a company needs to know. There are many uh, uh, things that even investors need to know in terms of that company's risk profile. So you can become a security securities law expert. So I believe that this industry is a significant, will be a significant in industry going forwards because BFSI, banking and financial services industry is one of the very few industries in India that is growing double the GDP's growth rate. GDP grows about seven, eight percent, but this industry collectively Financial services in particular is growing at about 14 to 16% CAGR for the last two decades. So can you imagine the amount of career potential that you will have going forwards? Let me, let me give you an example, okay? Often people ask me in last three years, since the end of 2019, last two and a half years, since the end of 2019, which sector have seen the bestest of performance at a time when the entire world was suffering from COVID, from coronavirus. In fact, you will notice that many of us were working from home. Many of us were you, many of you were studying from home. Many of you who were studying, who were working from home in other industry, they realized that they have a spare time because they're sitting and working for whom and they would want to upskill or they would want to introduce a new skill set. You see, capital markets saw the maximum number of people opening their DMAT accounts in this last two years because many of them were sitting at home and they were learning a new skill sets besides doing their official work. They were also exploring how they can learn about stock markets, how they can invest their money in stock markets. So three sectors that did very well in the last three, two and a half years is actually the companies that provide you internet services, because many of you were learning 
using Zoom platforms, go to meeting platforms. So data that was being utilized in these times grew at an exponential rate. But everybody was using, watching TV, watching Netflix and all those things. So imagine the data that was consumed in last two years. So the three sectors that did very well in this last two, three years is one pharmaceutical, other one is the data that is mobile telephone. And the third one was actually the financial services industry, including insurance. So, so the remark which I would want to give to conclude effectively what I want to share with you is that this is a multidisciplinary era and finance is something that you have to learn irrespective of where you work and what you do for your living. Everybody one day will earn salary. Everybody one day will retire. Everybody who do not even work in this industry, anybody who works in other sector, other industry, including, you can say, medical science, lawyers, engineers, civil servants, government employees, all of them have to do financial planning. At some stage, you'll have to know how to manage your wealth, how to multiply that wealth. So I always, I've always believed that even if you, if you do not work in this sector, even if you, you would want to specialize in some other industry, some other sector, but you should always be exposed as one subject in your curriculum where they teach you financial management. If not corporate, at least they should teach you personal financial management. Where that will make you a, a better investor, a better planner, financial planner, wealth manager, because you wouldn't have to depend entirely on somebody else to figure out how to multiply that investments that you do.